Hi, I'm Bob in Osterhout. I'd like to talk to you about human nature. Uh, that's not necessarily a stressful thing, but it really creates a context for how we view ourselves and our world. And I think it really does make a difference in stress management. If we have a clear picture of, of what we're really about, what is our nature, where do we come from, what's it, what's it about? Um, I disagree with common beliefs that, uh, and th these go back hundreds of years, that our nature uh, is that we're aggressive and that we're always trying to get accumulate more and get things and, and that our focus is on our self-interest and avoiding pain. Um, I understand the arguments that the philosophers made who came up with these ideas, but there's really very little evidence to support them. Uh, and, and actually, uh, more of the recent evidence uh, is in the other direction uh, in terms of that our, that our true nature is to form relationships with other people and actually to be empathic, to be able to put ourselves in the shoes of other people and understand how they see and feel and to work things out. And when we're not doing that, it's, it can be clearly identified that there's some distortion of the nature. And, and the distortion can come from the context or the situation, or it can come from tension. Um, there's an interesting, uh, some interesting research that happened by accident. Uh, there's a, a man named Robert Sapolsky, who's a, a neurobiologist, and he, was, he studied baboons in uh, Kenya for uh, quite a number of years and tracked their behaviors and got to know them quite well. And there were a number of alpha males who were always fighting among themselves and, and clobbering the women uh, and, and just taking out their aggression wherever they felt like it. And, and that was kind of an ongoing thing that he was observing. And then there was an interesting development. Uh, there, someone built a lodge nearby where his baboons lived and uh, they put out a bunch of trash in the, in the, in the garbage pit and in the trash was some rotten meat and uh, the alpha males, of course, got all the meat because they wouldn't let anybody else have any because that was their nature to be, you know, aggressive and push everybody else away and do what, what they wanted first. Um, and they all died. Uh, and uh, so what was left were the, the laid-back, easygoing males. And uh, the whole clan of baboons turned into a laid-back, easygoing clan. And the interesting thing is even uh, young adolescent baboons who came from other clans uh, uh, you know, where they were raised among alpha males, uh, 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 joined the clan, and within a few months they became laid back and relaxed. So outside of this context of aggression, uh, it never came back, okay? Uh, all of the aggression was in response to someone else's aggression. Uh, and this has been confirmed in, in genetics, too, because people talk about like a selfish gene and things like that. But actually, they're now learning that there are triggers for genes and it depends on the circumstances. And certain genes are triggered under certain circumstances and others are triggered in differing circumstances. So if we're raised in, a, in an atmosphere of, of love and support, uh, we'll have a different set of genetic triggers than if we're raised in an atmosphere of, of tension and, and a lack of, of, of our needs being met and, and being attentive to. Um, there's also uh, something they learn from young babies uh, that I think gives us a good indication of our nature. Uh, they tried some experiments in the 1930s where they raised babies um, in absolutely sterile environments. Some of them even went so far as to have hand gloves that they used to handle them so there were no germs on these babies at all. They were just absolutely, you know, totally healthy and given the, the best nutrition and all of that. The problem was is that 30 to 60 percent of them were dying uh, depending on, on where they were. Uh, and finally, uh, there was a doctor who said enough of this and he changed the whole system in the hospital where he was and put a sign up saying anytime you see a baby you have to touch them before you leave the room. Uh, and made sure that they were held and, and loved and, and, and uh, experienced that closeness and, and the problem was resolved. So uh, from our very first moments, uh, we have a need uh, for love and, and connection with other people. And I believe this is our true nature. I, th I believe this is where we come from. Um, and uh, virtually every religion that has lasted over time has love at the center of its, of its philosophy. Uh, uh, the Christian religion probably says it's simplest, uh, where the, the Bible says God is love. Uh, uh, 
Uh, you can't get any more clear than that. Uh, and that's a common message, really, if you, if you look into all of the, the religions. And there are people who've done research on that. There's a guy who's got a really thick book uh, outlining uh, and documenting all of that. Uh, but if you just look at uh, how can we understand the nature of something, uh, the first thing is that it's universal. Okay, gravity is everywhere on Earth. Okay, um, and the forces of gravity even apply in in outer space, but in different ways, and it's consistent uh, wherever you go. And uh, the other thing is that it lasts. Uh, that it, it uh, gravity doesn't go away. Okay, uh, it. it uh, it doesn't change with the weather, it doesn't dissipate, it doesn't uh, you know, die off or anything like that. Um, and it works consistently in the same way. And if you apply all of those to the concept of love, you find that it fits quite nicely. Okay? It's a universal thing. Throughout human history, people have connected and made lasting primary relationships and come together in family units. And people who describe uh, themselves as, as having satisfying and fulfilling lives, and, and actually they wind up living longer and being healthier, are those who have ongoing, deep, and enduring loving relationships. Um, love works. Okay, it's the it's the lasting solution to uh, difficult problems. Uh, I've seen many situations in relationships where one partner simply chose to love the other and ultimately the other brings down the wall and comes around. Now this isn't something that happens in a few days or weeks. It's, it's an ongoing process of month after month after month. Uh, but I firmly believe and, and I'm very clear when I say that I think that our true nature is to love each other. And, and so what is love? What is the definition of love? What does that mean? Uh, it's probably the most misunderstood concept in the world today. First of all, it's not attraction. Attraction is a temporary thing, and they've actually even identified uh, chemicals that, that are involved in, tr in romantic attraction. And it's kind of an interesting thing that when uh, two people uh, fall in love, their hormonal chemicals become similar. And then after about six months or a year or some period of time, then they go back to their own original chemical makeup. Uh, which is how, and then people at that point say, well, I've fallen out of love, okay, which doesn't really make a lot of sense. Love is a decision. It's a choice. It's not a feeling. Now, there are lots of good feelings that come with love, uh, but love itself can be very painful. Uh, love is a decision uh, for the best interests of another person to choose that those around us, and that just continues to grow to ultimately everyone on the planet, if you're really fully opening to love, that everyone reaches their full potential. And there's a very interesting philosophy about that. Uh, there's a man named Jacques Maritain, a philosopher in the 1930s, who said that that also serves the common good, that the, the common good of all is for each person to reach their own potential and to become everything that they could be and be fully fulfilled in life. And if everyone is doing that, then the whole world benefits. And that's really what love is about, and I think that that's our true nature. And if we take any situation and approach it from that perspective, that what's really true in this, what really underlines it, and what really uh, matters about this situation, um, is how can we bring love to it? And if we can ask that question, uh, first of all, we're going to get rid of stress and tension because that's just clearly an obstacle to it. And secondly, we're going to be more open to life and to each other. And life just simply becomes better each day. And we begin a process of opening our heart and deepening our love. Uh, and that becomes our lives. And those lives are stress-free lives. And those lives are satisfying and fulfilling lives. So give it some thought. Think about that. And when you run into a difficult situation, uh, see if you can look under the surface. And what's the true nature there? What's, and you can always see a way that that got distorted if there are problems. Let's clear up the distortions, and we get back to our nature, and life can be good. Thank you.